Hello guys, welcome to Vidich Academy. In this section, we are going to deal with coordinate geometry, whose main objective is to study the algebraic meaning of geometrical figures and the geometric meaning of algebraic expressions. So, in the present session, let us revise some of the topics which we learned in our previous classes. So, the first topic which we are going to deal with is coordinate axis. So now, let us consider a pair of mutually perpendicular lines with reference x, x dash and y, y dash. So these straight lines are called as coordinate axis and their point of intersection is called the origin which is denoted by the letter O. So generally, we term the horizontal line as x-axis, whereas the vertical line as y-axis. So remember that the coordinate axis divide the plane into four equal parts and each part is called as a quadrant. So this is the first quadrant and then this is the second and here we get third quadrant and at last this is the fourth quadrant. And now let us come to the next topic which is coordinates. So for this let us consider a point P in the plane with the order pairs XP, YP. So let me tell you XP denotes the perpendicular distance of P from Y axis and YP denotes the perpendicular distance of P from x-axis. So thus, the point P is represented by the order pairs of real numbers shown xp, yp. So the same order pair in the quadrant 2 will become P minus xp, yp as here x-axis is negative and then coming to the third quadrant we get the order pairs in the form of P minus of XP comma minus YP as in this quadrant both X and Y axis are negative and in the last quadrant we get the order pairs as P XP comma minus YP. So as the first element which is XP of the order pair is called as X coordinate or abscissa and the second element is called the Y coordinate or just ordinate. So remember that every order pair of P which consists of real numbers represents a unique point in the plane. So here we can say that if Y coordinate YP is equal to 0 then the point P lies on X axis or else if X coordinate XP is 0 then the point lies on Y axis. So thus we can see that the coordinates of the origin O are 0, 0 as it belongs to both the axes. And now let us move forward and discuss the next concept which is distance between two points. For instance, let us consider two points such as P and Q and its distance is denoted by PQ and is given by the formula which is equal to under root x1 minus x2 whole square plus of y1 minus y2 whole square. So here this term is nothing but difference of x coordinates and this term represents the difference of y coordinates. And make a note that pq distance will always be equal to qp distance. For instance, if we need to find the distance between the origin and the point p, which is denoted by OP is given by the formula under root x1 square plus y1 square. Suppose if A comma B are two distinct points then we denote the line segment joining both the points by AB line segment then the ray from A through B is denoted by AB ray whereas the straight line is denoted by AB line. And now let us proceed and discuss a few more concepts. 
So the next concept is collinear points. So for this, let us consider a line which consists of two or more points. So here we can see that two or more points are said to be collinear if they lie on the same line. So three points, say A, B and C are collinear if AB distance plus BC distance will be equal to AC distance. Or else BC plus AC will be equal to AB or AC plus AB will be equal to BC. And one more condition is if the area of triangle is equal to zero, then only we can say that these points are collinear. And now let us discuss the formula to find area of triangle, which is given by 1 by 2 mod x1 into y2 minus y3 plus of x2 into y3 minus y1 plus of x3 into y1 minus y2. So, if we need to find the area of a triangle with the vertices 0, A and P, then the formula is given by delta is equal to 1 by 2 into x1 y2 minus x2 y1. So this is about area of triangle and now let us discuss section formula. So for this let us consider a line and if the point P which divides the line segment joining the points A and B in the ratio m is to n, the first case internally is given by the formula mx2 plus nx1 divided by m plus n, comma my2 plus ny1 divided by m plus n. And the next case which is if it divides externally then the formula would be mx2 minus nx1 divided by m minus n, comma my2 minus ny1 divided by m minus n or else if x axis divide the line segment ab then the ratio would be minus y1 is to y2 and similarly if y axis divides the line segment ab then the ratio would be minus x1 is to x2 so make a note that the points p which divide the line segment in the ratio 2 is to 1 or 1 is to 2 are called points of trisection as well as the coordinates of midpoint of the line segment AB is given by the formula x1 plus x2 divided by 2 comma y1 plus y2 divided by 2 and now let us discuss area of quadrilateral so let us consider a rough diagram and here this is the quadrilateral with the vertices ABCD and note that the area of quadrilateral ABCD is sum of the areas of triangle ABC as well as triangle BDC. And the general formula to find the area is 1 by 2 into mod x1 into y2 minus y4 plus of x2 into y3 minus y1 plus of x3 into y4 minus y2 plus of x4 into y1 minus y3. So this is about the formula to find area of quadrilateral. And now let us discuss about concurrent lines. So this is the rough diagram. So three or more straight lines are said to be concurrent if all the straight lines have only one common point and this common point is called as point of concurrency which is denoted by P. And now let us discuss about medians and centroid. So in a triangle ABC, the line segment joining the vertex to the midpoint D of the opposite side BC, then AD is called as median of the triangle ABC. Similarly, these are the midpoints E and F. So the medians of a triangle are concurrent as they have only one common point and this point is denoted by G and is named as centroid of the triangle. So make a note that the centroid G divides the median in the ratio 2 is to 1 internally. 
the centroid G of the triangle EBC with the vertices x1, y1, x2, y2 and then x3, y3 is given by the formula G is equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3 divided by 3 comma y1 plus y2 plus y3 divided by 3. So this is about median and now let us proceed and discuss about angular bisectors. Under angular bisectors, let us first discuss in center. The bisectors of the internal angles of the triangle ABC are concurrent and the point of concurrency is called as in center which is denoted by I and it is equidistant from three sides of the triangle and this distance is called as in radius of the triangle which is denoted by R. So the circle drawn with I as center and R as the radius touches all the three sides of the triangle internally and this circle is named as in circle of the triangle. And the formula to find the in center is I equal to AX1 plus BX2 plus CX3 divided by A plus B plus C comma AY1 plus BY2 plus CY3 divided by A plus B plus C where X1, X2, X3 and Y1, Y2, Y3 are the coordinates of the vertices of the triangle whereas ABC are the sides of the triangle. And now under the same concept let us discuss X center. So the bisector of internal angle E and the bisectors of external angles B and C are congruent as it has a common point and this point of concurrency is called X center which is denoted by I1 and it is equidistant from the sign BC as well as from the extensions of the sign AB and AC. And this distance is called as X radius of the triangle which is denoted by R1. So the circle drawn by considering I1 as the center and R1 as the radius touches three sides of the triangle and this circle is called as X circle of a triangle opposite to the vertex A. And similarly, we get two more X circles opposite to the vertex B as well as C. So completely, there are three X circles for a triangle. So the X centers of these X circles are denoted by I1 and its coordinate will be given by the formula minus AX1 plus BX2 plus CX3 divided by minus A plus B plus C comma minus AY1 plus BY2 plus CY3 divided by minus A plus B plus C. And the X center which is denoted by I2 will be equal to the formula AX1 minus BX2 plus CX3 divided by A minus B plus C. And the Y coordinate will be AY1 minus BY2 plus CY3 divided by A minus B plus C. And similarly this is the formula to find the coordinates of X center I3. And now let us proceed and discuss about altitudes and orthocenter. So this is a triangle ABC and a perpendicular line from the vertex A to the opposite sign BC is termed as altitude of the triangle. So let us name the perpendicular point D so that AD is said to be the altitude of the triangle. And similarly, let us give name to the point of intersection as E so that BE becomes altitude and here we get F so CF is the altitude. So the point of concurrency of these altitudes is called as ortho center and usually it is denoted by O. So let us write O over here. And now let us proceed and discuss about perpendicular bisectors of the sides. So let us draw a rough diagram in which ABC is a triangle and these are the perpendicular bisectors of the sides AB, AC and BC. And the point of concurrency of these bisectors is called as circumcenter of the triangle which is denoted by S. And the circumcenter S is equidistant from the vertices of the triangle. So from this we can draw a circle 
taking s as the center and the distance from s to any vertex which is denoted by r that is radius passes through all the three vertices of the triangle so this circle is named as circumcircle so this was the revision regarding basic concepts in geometry so using this concept we are going to proceed and discuss locus as well as transformation of axis in our upcoming videos so stay tuned thanks for watching have a nice day Thank you.